Professor John J. Farmer, Jr. is the director of the Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rutgers University and the Miller Center for Community Protection and Resilience within the Institute. John is an esteemed lawyer and dear friend of the International March of the Living. A former Attorney General of New Jersey, he brings to us his experience, his insight, and his commitment to seeking justice. Thank you and good evening. To the layperson, and even to some of its victims, the wave of arsons, assaults, arrests, and murders unleashed on November 9th, 1938, on the so-called Kristallnacht, may have seen an unplanned, spontaneous eruption of outrage at the murder of a Nazi official in Paris. Synagogues, shops, homes were vandalized and burned in the thousands. Over 90 Jews were murdered, countless others beaten. 20,000 Jews were seized and sent to the concentration camps at Dachau, Buchenwald, and Sachsenhausen. Several hundred died at the hands of the guards. It may have appeared spontaneous, chaotic, and unplanned, but it was anything but. What was easy to miss in the apparent chaos and violence was the careful underlying planning lurking just beneath that fiery surface. Earlier that day, Orders were issued to the German police and fire brigades by Reinhard Heydrich that spelled out in specific detail the rules of engagement for the police and fire departments throughout Germany, Austria, and the Sudetenland. These orders read, in relevant part, quote, because of the assassination of Legation Secretary von Roth in Paris, demonstrations throughout the Reich are to be expected tonight, November 8, 9-10, 1938. A, only such actions may be carried out which do not threaten German lives or property, for example, the burning of synagogues only when there is no threat of fire to the surroundings. Stores and residences of Jews may only be destroyed but not looted. The police are instructed to supervise compliance with this order and to arrest looters. Special care is to be taken on commercial streets that non-Jewish businesses are completely secured against any damage. Foreign citizens, even if they are Jewish, may not be molested. Demonstrations in progress should not be prevented by the police but only supervised for compliance with these guidelines. Existing archival material is to be impounded by the police in all synagogues and offices of the Jewish community centers to prevent its destruction in the course of the demonstrations. As soon as the course of events during this night allows the, the assigned police officers to be used for this purpose, as many Jews, particularly affluent Jews, are to be arrested in all districts as can be accommodated in existing detention facilities. For the time being, only healthy male Jews whose age is not too advanced are to be arrested. Immediately after the arrests have been carried out, the appropriate concentration camps should be contacted to place the Jews into camps as quickly as possible. Special care should be taken that Jews arrested on the basis of this instruction are not mistreated. The chief of the order police has issued the corresponding instructions to the order police, including the fire brigades. Close coordination is to be maintained between the security police and the order police during the implementation of the ordered actions, signed Reinhard Heydrich. These orders were followed meticulously. In Frankfurt, for instance, the commander of the 50th Brigade passed on the order, noting that, quote, all the Jewish synagogues within the 50th Brigade are to be blown up or set on fire immediately. Neighboring houses occupied by Aryans are not to be damaged. The action is to be carried out in civilian clothes. Rioting and plundering are to be prevented. The execution of the order began at once, close quote. This after-action report then lists no fewer than 35 synagogues or other Jewish facilities that were either blown up, destroyed by fire, or otherwise vandalized. And that's just in the Frankfurt area. Kristallnacht was the event that brought to light the naked vulnerability of the Jewish population. Having already been stripped of the attributes of legal personhood by the Nuremberg Laws and other measures, Kristallnacht signaled the abandonment of the Jewish population by the very institutions of civil society responsible for protecting the public from criminal acts providing safety from fire. In fact, the police and fire services were conscripted to aid in the destruction. Kristallnacht was the event in which hatred migrated permanently across the plain blood barrier of extremism and became open and state-sponsored violence. As David Trump has put it, quote, through the end of 1937, it remained possible to hope that the Nazi persecution might still respect some last limits of humanity. Surely in an advanced and cultured nation, some decency must still constrain uttermost barbarity, close quote. On Kristallnacht, the last of those illusions was smashed like broken glass. The protection of vulnerable populations is the purpose of the Miller Center at Rutgers. 
We have worked with communities as diverse as the Muslim population in Brussels, Belgium, and the Jewish community in Whitefish, Montana, the African American community in Louisiana and Mississippi, and the Sikh community in Wisconsin. We have also authored <coughs> reports exposing the emergence of militia groups like the Boogaloo Boys and predicting their potential for violence, the rise in anti-Asian hatred in the wake of the pandemic, the emergence of extreme leftist violence, the insidious propaga propagation of QAnon conspiracy theories, a report on the new face of anti-Semitism emerging on social media, a report on the social media incitement that occurred in the days leading up to the January 6th assault on our nation's capital, and a report on the role of extremist social media sites in promoting vaccine hesitancy through misinformation. Our research has disclosed that some events, which appear spontaneous eruptions when covered as they occurred, were in reality, like Kristallnacht, more closely coordinated by at least some of the participants than they appeared to be. Furthermore, our research has brought home how much attention in the social media extremist world has been focused on the police as targets of both recruitment to extremist views and scapegoats of extremist violence. Just as Kristallnacht and what followed resulted from intensely controlled and intensifying messaging of hateful propaganda, so the extremism of today is a product of a social media environment that has monetized ideology, that reinforces every form of prejudice, that converts general proclivities into fixed convictions. And our work has shown that when the messaging of hate reaches a peak of intensity, violence erupts. Buildings are torched, property is destroyed, people are injured, people die. The only answer to such heat is light. The light of truth, the light ex that exiles hate into outer darkness, the truth that shames every form of hate. That light is what today's program is about. On behalf of the Miller Center, I want to thank our partners at the International March of Living for inviting us to co-sponsor this important commemoration.